just because it's the weekend doesn't mean I slack off in my due diligence. This is more or less a hobby for me. Yeah, some consider it a problem. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is the weekend of August 9th. Now, what I like to do on this show is just to share some of my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock, at least in my opinion. I trade penny stocks every day from bell to bell. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market, the OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. There is no lack of penny stocks, but I'm looking for a particular type of penny stock, a hot penny stock, a penny stock that has potential to make us money. And when I go looking for a stock that has potential, that has heat, I do not go looking through the press releases and the filings. Not initially, it's too time consuming. I want to see a lot of information as quickly as I can. So I go to the charts. I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And at a glance, I can see if a chart has heat. I'm looking for particular patterns. I'm looking for signals that say this chart is most likely going to start climbing. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I take the time to go rummaging around through those press releases and filings of that particular company, looking for some hot news. If you can find hot information to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. So up for your consideration is ticker PSIG, PS International Group. Now this company just came on the market three weeks ago. She came on through a reverse merger through a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. And we'll get into more details about that here in just a minute. When PSIG came onto the market, she did like a lot of companies that just come onto the market. She crashed, immediately going into a downtrend. She did find a floor. She's been dragging her butt across that floor. And right now she is bouncing off of it, showing all the strength and green bars we like to see. And she's banging up against that 200, looking promising for a breakout. And we do have some good news over here to get her moving. PSIG, she finished the day just a little over a dollar on Friday, and she was up almost 50%, clocking in at about 46.5% gains. Now, PSIG is on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ. So this gives you advantages over the OTC. First off, all of your transactions are free. You don't have to pay to buy or sell your shares. You can trade pre-market, after-market. You can never do that with the OTC. And I assure you folks, there's a lot of big money-making opportunities in those periods of time. Plus, the major exchange has a heck of a lot more money and way more volume than the OTC does. If you're going to be trading stocks, that's what you want, money and volume. And last but not least, there's a lot more rules up on the major exchange these companies have to abide by, which ultimately just keeps our investments safer. So what is PSIG about? Well, this is a company out of China and Hong Kong that works with logistics and shipping. It was back in December, they entered into this reverse merger agreement with AIB Acquisition Corporation, a SPAC. Now, what the heck is a SPAC? Well, basically a SPAC is a bunch of investors coming together to secure a ticker on the major exchange. But they have no services, they have no products, they have no business. So they're not generating any revenues. All they're basically doing is securing a piece of real estate. They're a shell company looking for a company that's making money. So they go out looking to make a deal, looking for a private company that wants to get onto the exchange, or looking for a company on a lower exchange that wants to uplist. Now there's some strange things that come along with SPACs. First off, they have a time limit. When a SPAC comes onto the market, they get 18 to 24 months to make a deal. They have no idea who they're going to be merging with. It's all up in the air when they come onto the market. Well, if they fail to consummate a deal within their time limit, 18 to 24 months, you're not going to believe this. They give all the money back to the investors. <gasps> I'm not kidding. It's a money back guarantee, folks. So because of that, they've got some special rules when it comes to the stock. When they come onto the market, they start selling shares for the company before they even know who they're going to merge with. We have no idea who they're going to merge with. And yet we are buying shares of this company, call them speculative shares, and they sell them for $10 each. And they are worth $10 until they close a deal. Now we can bid the price up 
to $11, $12. We can push that price down, $9, $8. But it's always worth $10 until they close a deal. So if they fail to make a deal, they know exactly how much to give back to everybody, $10. So what happens if you got lucky and bought shares at eight bucks before they close the deal? You're gonna make a profit. You're gonna get $10 back for every single share. So the company went out looking for a deal, AIB Acquisition Corporation. They were selling shares, accumulating money. All that money is going into a bank for all those shares. And whoever they make a deal with gets a bucket of money. They throw money at the new company to help them grow because it is an investment for the investors. And they chose PSI, the Chinese Hong Kong Logistic Shipping Company. PSI is one of the renowned air freight forwarding specialists in Hong Kong, providing global logistics and supply chain services to clients of various industries, including postal operators, e-commerce merchants, senders, and cosignees. Founded in 1993, the company is headquartered in Hong Kong with a global network of about 193 major ports around the world operating through its two subsidiaries, Profit Sale Express and Business Great Global Supply Chain Limited. Now they are based in Hong Kong, but they have a prominent logistics hub in China. They are connected to 26 major cities. They tell us that PSI benefits from the unique geographical advantages of providing integrated solutions that combine ocean, air and overland logistics. Now they give us some information about the money they were making before they came onto the market. The first half of 2023, they did $67 million worth of revenue, which was up 36%. Their profit margin went to 7.6 million, which was up over 100%. So the company is growing in revenues. They're doing strong business. They like to think of themselves as a postal service. Now, America has a postal service, and yes, it's for America, but don't they ship anywhere in the world? Doesn't anywhere in the world ship to us? That's exactly what they're doing too. And their countries are a lot bigger than our countries. <laughs> then we've got a news press on July 18th telling us that the stock would be on the market July 19th, and it was. Now, when we jump over to their website, what I found most curious is this is a Chinese Hong Kong company, and yet the site comes up in English. There's not even a choice to put it in Chinese. I did find that a bit interesting. This is ProfitSale.com. They tell us that they are a cross-border trading leader in China and Hong Kong with professional experience in the shipping logistic industry since 1993. They're looking at over 30 years experience. They tell us they are connected to 193 international major ports, as well as 25 major cities in mainland China. So they are out there, folks. They're quite big after 30 years. And whatever it takes to deliver their parcels, letters, whatever it is they've got, they do, whether it be by land, by air, or by sea. And they're making good money doing it. Taking a look at the relative volume for the company. Well, we do have a jump and bump today, going from 333,000 shares up to 2.3 million. That's about seven-fold increase in one day. Share structure for the company. Ooh, they don't give us any information here. That's okay. I went searching and found it. We have an outstanding share count of just under 25 million. I couldn't find the float, but we know it's not gonna be more than the outstanding share count. So it won't be any higher than 25 million which is a pretty decent float. And when you take into consideration the insiders do own a lot of these shares, we have a low float, whatever it is. Our market cap, well, that's figured out by taking your outstanding shares and just multiplying it times the price. Well, we know we've got roughly 25 million shares and the price is roughly a buck, so our market cap is roughly 25 million. Taking a look at the financials for PSIG, they don't give us anything over here. Not the annuals, not the quarterlies, not even a balance sheet. That's okay. I dove into the most recent financial to get this information. Now, this is the most recent financial, the one that came out for the combining of the two companies. So that's what we're looking at right here, both companies together. 
we're looking at the last column here, revenues uh, at the end of December 31st, 2023, they had $140 million worth of revenues. We had read they had done 67 million in the first half. Full year, 140 million. Gross profit, we got to keep about 12, 13 million of that. Looking at the balance sheet for the company, cash and cash equivalents, what we like to think of as the bank, we have got 9.2 million in the bank. Total assets, we've got just under 34 million. And total liabilities, we've got just over 24 million. So we are holding positive stockholder equity in this company of just over $9 million. So they're making money, they're making profit, and we have stockholder equity. Just came on the market and the stock looks like it's ready to run on the charts. I'm liking all of that, folks. Disclosures. All right, we've got a couple of SC13Ds here. These are always good news because this is when a new investor comes on board. They buy enough shares to actually become part owner. Well, this is the merger deal. These are the shares being transferred amongst the new management. And there's the 20F. This is the most recent financial, the one we were just looking at. So if you really want to get a lot of information about the company, forget about Google. There's not a lot out there. Just jump into the financials and read through that. Not an easy read, but there is a lot of information in there. So there you go, folks. We got a company that just came on the market, a shipping logistics company out of Hong Kong and China that's working around the world, are working with 193 major ports, 25 major cities in China, have been in business for 30 years. It all looks good to me, including the chart. Let's go take a look at that now. So let's take a look at PS International Groups on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We got PSIG opened up to a 20-day, one-hour view because it's all we need. Remember, she just came on the market three weeks ago, July 19th. So that is the entire chart. Now, before we look at the chart, I need to give you some extra information that I can't fully explain, but you need to know. Normally, when we come over here looking at a chart for a closing on a SPAC, we get to see all the SPAC's history and the new company's history on that chart. It's one chart. So you see a $10 price line, then you see the company's closing and the drop or pop, whatever happened. We don't see that here. We're picking this up at $3. Why? I can't explain why. We know that the SPAC, AIB, entered into the reverse merger in December with PSI. Well, I read that in May, they got kicked off the NASDAQ. I have no clue why. They got thrown down to the OTC and they got a ticker. Now they weren't on the OTC very long, but when they fell down there, the price fell too. It fell from $10 down to $5, then down to $3. Then just before the merger closed, the stock went back onto the NASDAQ, but the price did not follow it. And all those charts, AIB's chart, it's gone. It's disappeared. I can't even find it to show you. I don't know why they did that. So this is really all we get to look at. July 19th, this reverse merger with the SPAC came on the market at $3. Unheard of, folks. That day, she doubled, 100% jumped to 6 bucks, And at the bell, she gave it all away. And she tumbled and fell. Then she went into a tailspin, falling down to this low of 65 cents on August 5th. And off of that, she's slowly and steadily climbing, hitting just over a dollar right now. Now let's zoom in on my SNRs, my supports and resistances. Now my supports and resistances are in the basement, folks. I've got three of them. One at a buck 11, a buck 33, and a buck 54. But this stock is worth 10 bucks. Right, the company did their research, so these SNRs are way down in the basement. My top one here will get us 50% gains if we reach it. I honestly don't think there's an if involved here. I think she's gonna crush these resistances and just keep going. As you can see on this chart, she was in a downtrend. She kept coming up, banging her head on this 50-day SMA and not getting over it. And there's no other SMA to compete with. There was no 200 here. That was our strongest SMA. She then hit the low and stopped her downtrend. 
Now she's going sideways. She got close to the 50 day SMA when it was starting to level off and go flat. And that's when she broke out, jumping from about uh, 65 cents up to a buck two. That's a huge run there, folks. Then she came down to her 50 day SMA. She floated on that for a couple of days. Then she dipped underneath the 50 and she took off. Now, to me, this looks kind of like a crouch and pounce. When you see a stock going sideways and then all of a sudden take a dip, and why did she take the dip? Well, this is just my thinking. We had two new SMAs just come onto the board, the 200-day SMA and the 200 haul. And normally, when a new SMA comes onto the board, you see the price gravitate to it. Doesn't matter if the price is above it or below it. Normally, it goes right to the new SMA. Sometimes it stays there, sometimes it goes back to what it was doing. Well, I think the price was giving homage to both here. It dipped down towards the new 200 and then it took off pushing towards the new 200 MA up here. And we have got a climb going on now. She's gotten through the 20 and the 50 day SMA, floating on her nine day, piercing that 200, coming up to our second resistance of 134 and falling back to our first resistance of a buck 11 right at our 200. Our volume, if I back this up, you can see is growing, not in huge spurts, but it is growing slowly but surely. And the very last bar on Friday was huge folks, giant bar at the end of the day. And even after Mark, the volume kept coming in. This is a beautiful breakout that is happening right now. Now let's look at our oscillators and see what sort of strength we got. Our PPO percentage price oscillator, definitely climbing MACD climbing hard. Look at the big green bars getting bigger and bigger. And our RSI is way deep into the overbought cresting at 77 and pulling back. And right now she's at 73. Yeah, it is pulling back a little bit, but she's still on fire. This is a very hot chart folks. Let's come on down to our, uh, yeah, let's look at the 10 day, 30 minute. So we've got a downtrend on our 200 day SMA here. She is just now thinking about going flat. Looks like she's actually breaking out early here to me. She made her dip here, came up over top of the 200, laid on that a little bit and then bounced. She got through one resistance, tagged the second, fell back. And right now she is floating on top of our first resistance at a buck 11. All of our SMAs are now turned up and crossing the 200. Every time a smaller SMA crosses a bigger SMA, it's called a golden cross. It's a power boost to the price climbing. So we got a lot of power coming into the picture right now. Our oscillators say everything is still strong. Our PPO percentage price oscillator still climbing. MACD, which is a lot like your PPO, MACD uses the full price percentage price oscillator. Yes, uses a percentage of the price. Everything is climbing. We do have a little bit of pullback here, but not much. Our RSI did drop coming down underneath the 70, but it is now starting to climb again. This looks great folks. This looks like she wants to continue climbing in my opinion. Take a look at our five day, 15 minute. Look at how the price is respecting that 200. She was on a downtrend. Price got up on top of it, laid on it, did not dare try to stand up. You try to stand up on a falling 200, you normally fall deeper. She fell down to the 50 day SMA to get her balance, slowly rolled that back up onto the 200, took a crouch here, got up on top of the 200. Now we're hovering on it. Then she took this crouch and pounce like a cat, right? She came down a couple inches to jump a few feet. So she ran here from about 70 cents up to 97 cents through the day, went sideways until the end of the day, had no idea why it got this excited, but she jumped from 91 cents up to a buck 30. You're looking at almost a 50% run right there at the end of the day. She then came back down. She had to, that price is way too far away from our nine day SMA. All of our SMAs and the price have rubber bands attached to them. You get too far away from anything, it snaps back. And that's all it did. It snapped back to home on top of our nine day SMA. So it's fully controlled. 
floating on our nine day on top of our strong resistance, which is now a support. And it looks like she has just bounced off of our support, off of our nine. She is climbing. All of our SMAs are on an uphill trend. All of our oscillators look really good on our 15 minute. Our MACD, which was falling on our 30 minute, is now starting to come back up. Everything is looking promising here, folks. Five day, five minute. 200 falling. Where did we have our breakout? Yes, where the 200 went flat. Once it went flat, she was underneath it, and then boing, she just shot up out of nowhere. Came down to the 200, which she is fully respecting. Then we had our dip, and then we had our run. Right now, she's come back to that strong resistance. See how she is bouncing off of that, waiting for all of our SMAs to come up over top of it. And we got a couple strong green bars, all looking like they're ready to climb. Our oscillators, everything shows strength is starting to build up now. Our PPO is level, showing just a tinge of starting to climb. Our MACD is about ready to cross over the line. It is climbing, and our RSI is climbing. Folks, I like this. The chart isn't perfect. No chart is perfect. But this is showing a lot of potential, a lot of strength. She has a lot of ceilings she can regain. Just getting up to my top resistance of $1.54 is going to give you about 50% gains. But what are you going to get if she goes up to 5 bucks? 500% gains. Now, I'm not saying stay in it until she hits 5 bucks. What I'm saying is, anytime you see a strong run that looks weird, wow, she's really strong today, sell. Sell when things are too strong for normal because she's probably going to come back down and you can get back in at a cheap price. Then she starts to climb again. And when she has a strange, strong run, sell on a strange, strong run. She's probably going to fall again and you can get in at a cheap price. I'm liking PSIG. Just on the market, undervalued, making money, making profit. It's all growing and they got stockholder equity. What more can we ask for? It's a company in China. They're growing. I'm loving it. But of course, it isn't going to hurt you to do some more due diligence, right? You know what I always say? The more you know, the more you know. <laughs>